feminist, uh, and she will be talking to us about women's engagement as visible and invisible role in global democratic movements, and, and probably uh, Vietnam will be the main case here. So uh, there's a lot packed into today. Uh, so without further ado, I would like to hand it over to uh, Fong Suan. Uh, 
mess up the whole thing for the second time I mess up in the last few years. And uh, I need a new generation, new generation of refugees. So uh, this is uh, my multi-sided approach because work, working on the migrants in the exile, exile people, displaced people. I think we need to work on uh, such a multi-sided approach. Uh, I would say that uh, working among the islanders for many years in Chin State, Chin State, and Chin State, uh, I was used to 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 work with uh, people who have to move away from their uh, village of origin, you know, and uh, there's a one uh, very important book for us, which was uh, Marie Callahan, The Making of uh, Enemies, published in 2004. So, as anthropologists and sociologists and political scientists, we uh, were thinking about the ethnic groups, ethnic minorities, or minorized populations as uh, enemies. But there is a new, so it's meaningful, of course. It's a topic of my, my talk today. And uh, there is a new book just published in French language by Michel Agier and uh, we call uh, uh, about uh, un, undesired ability. So people we don't want. It's not only my ones, it's uh, as we will see in the new people, the power of the, the, the whole population. This is a, quite a, a big change of what people we want and people we don't want in Myanmar after the very situation, of course. And uh, so, uh, undesirability and the enemies is not exactly on uh, the same level. It's uh, two complementary links of the chain of exclusion. People we don't we don't want enemies is assignment. I show I exactly say who is my enemy. And uh, undeserved desirability is a kind of a discussive uh, process, but actually a uh, conceptual process. But actually it's not conceptual in the, uh, when uh, dictators are speaking. It's not a critical method of doubt. It's propaganda, just the same propaganda, okay? So, there is a range of country dictator. This is propaganda explains, uh, uh, show, uh, describe uh, what are the people's desire, you know, people's desire. So, I would like to insist a little bit, a little bit on this concept. I will use it as a concept, but uh, I'm not sure it's the uh, one. And what's uh, people's desire in Burmese language, in vernacular language, we say, Kidu Tabota. Kidu Tabota. And the military, at the time, they translate Kidu Tabota in English. Their own translation is people's desire. So, if we compare the Burmese expression and the uh, English translation, the Buddha is, uh, you can say, I think, a will, something we want, okay, like this, the Buddha. And once you translate people's desire, desire in desire, there is emotion. In the Buddha, there is no emotion, there is a kind of order. You should think like this. This is your desire. We think for you. So it's, I don't translate the word as they translate the word in desire, okay? With, uh, so they introduce emotion. Yes, I told you emotion is everywhere now in the, among the refugees, okay? But what kind of emotion they are speaking about? It's not emotion, it's hate, okay? So the people's desire, I use their English translation, is uh, opposed. So the 
we are human external elements acting as a substitute for the negative views opposed. Three times opposed. Oppose those trying to jeopardize the stability of the state and progress of the nation. Oppose foreign nations interfering in internal affairs of the state. And finally, crush all internal and external destructive elements as the common enemy. Oppose and crush. For the military, that was the people's desire, and when we discuss with the people, of course, they love it. It's not my desire, but uh, it means it's very interesting because the military, uh, by doing so, uh, they, once they, from one side, they, ma they marginalize the population, the whole population, it becomes a kind of virtual population. That's what the other population has to think about. How they have to think about it. It's a kind of problem. And uh, it's a marginalization because it's a military who is speaking for the people. And uh, with the uh, abstraction of any emotion. And emotion becomes a uh, language, language of Hey. Okay. So, I think it's very important in anthropology, and I think that anthropology since the 1990s, uh, 90s, they made a distinction between uh, affect and emotion. And affect is the emotion of the emotion.
continuous and poverty. poverty. So that's why when I was uh, living in, in uh, I was based in Bangkok in 
generation Z, Z generation, it's not so. Z doesn't mean it's the youngest, no. Z means uh, this new generation of uh, intellectual and uh, new uh, generation uh, coming in. So, and this reality is, uh, is uh, we can uh, understand the concept of undesirability with uh, in three poles. You know, you have the military counterpart. Those people, they don't use anymore Tamago, which is a name, traditional name for, for the Burmese army. They don't want to use anymore, they are just uh, dictators and soldiers. And, uh, and what is terrible is that propaganda is opposed to crush the people who are opposed, opposed to make, to design, to assign enemies, you know, and uh, crush the sun can be opposed, like a concept, but one more time it's not a concept at all, opposed. Those who make the any troubles for uh, the stability of our uh, country. The problem now is, uh, is that the whole people become enemies and oppose and crush the whole population, the entire population in Myanmar. And just to conclude is to say that uh, um, there is a territory of desocialization. I call this enclave in, in, in Bangkok territories of desocialization. Now it's not only and clubs who are territories of desocialization. Des des the whole country, Myanmar, is a territory of desocialization. So we have to understand how they, of course, they, they, they are thinking for a, a, a new future. But we have to think also about the fact that what is very important is uh, at the same time the whole country is uh, designed, assigned as the enemies of the junta, military junta. The military junta becomes a kind of uh, ethnic groups, you know, uh, and closing is, uh, is uh, its cultural frame. And uh, so these ethnic groups become one of the enemies as ethnic groups, you know, but uh, quite isolated compared to what's happened before. So, so we may say, or I may say to conclude that uh, of course now what we can observe is a, a, a new image of uh, what uh, the French anthropologists call in the 70s, uh, uh, the nation's state. state. Okay, but it's not exactly like this. It's, it's, it's the nation against the state. It's the nation against, against the army. And in that case, army is a nation. The military, they don't need any population. The military is a society. That's the real problem. And uh, so nation against the state, not because People are fleeing, they don't want to need a central power, what is this? It's not uh, the part of not being governed by a uh, skirt, uh, because again, you conceptualize uh, this people, the highlanders of the, what you call uh, Zonia, as the people who, were, who escaped for, for dictators or for any central power. What's happened now is not uh, people who escape from a central power, people who don't want any more such uh, uh, military organization, uh, military regime in Burma. So the whole question is uh, what's happened for the future? The problem is very important because I don't hear among the activists and uh, institutions like I still, what I'm still hearing is that uh, people are speaking about uh, federal state with uh, ethnic groups, you know, and, uh, like a 
Stamps and the Angola people. Still, we made the same problem. Nobody is speaking for the future of uh, citizenship. And so, nationalism is still a goal of citizenship. It's the reverse. People, we should think as uh, intellectual and politicians should, uh, should uh, think as well. Okay, thank you very much. I'm sorry for my very poor English. Thank you very much. It was between, it was still COVID, 
So we have this idea of there's so many new creative were born and starting to move forward even within COVID. You know, the chefs are making new products. The graphic designers are making products to make money, even though they can't go out. So we said, when we came out of this COVID, we want to have a space for the creative people to come together. Whether if you're a punk, whether if you're a graphic designer, whether if you're a chef. So on the left, um, he's painting. Um, this was actually happened on the 31st of January 2021. We actually had a live painting party at my house. And we heard the news of the coup and we refused to listen. Because we like to be in the new, exciting, um, forward, era that is coming after COVID. So we had a crazy party night and then it happened. And this creative space was the space where all the creative people came and did protest sign making. This is where they rest. This is where they gather to um, how they go to walk through the protests or where this is where they come and rest and create while when there was still coup happening. So I can't say the name of it because this creative space still exists in Yangon. And so when this coup happened we, because we had the space, we were able to create press jackets for the journalists. This is where they come and rest and paint. And this is where we gather to rest before 8 p.m. Um, so that we can go back home and do exactly the same thing again, going out on the street. So on the right hand side, that's my dad and I doing a screen printing uh, for the journalists. And then on the left hand side is a 100 projector. So I just grabbed my bed sheet and we hang it on the bamboo and we work with the 100 projectors. This is what's happening. So the projecting was what's happening around Myanmar during that time and we displayed it on our street. So before I come to this picture, um, after I it's okay, we can just leave there. So April 2021, that's when I left Myanmar and I came to Bangkok and So we call it we call it zoo fights because there was more animals and people uh, because not everybody can live with that child fight. It's very expensive. And also, as we were saying earlier, not only the refugees that lived in Thailand. So during my parents' era in 1988, there were people leaving Myanmar um, illegally, but this time they are Myanmar people leaving legally, not because they have money to leave, but they have to leave Myanmar, or else they will go to jail. So there were a group of us, and we happened to have a little bit of funding from the German government, and we were able to create a, a, a creative space or a exile club. So that's where it goes to the next slide. So, my friends and I, um, we started doing food fundraising in Bangkok. Um, so 
like you were saying earlier, not always in migrant workers. They were there are a lot of educated people who are living in Myanmar as well. And which is someone like me who is a chef. What can I do to be a part of it even when I'm not in Myanmar? This is the kind of things we do. We I don't think Mohinga alone has food fundraising or we do a private seven course service meal. Whatever we can create to um, continue raising money to give back to our people. Um, so then can we do the next one? So this is the first year of anniversary call. He said anniversary, it's not an anniversary, it's a supposed to be good to celebrate. Um, so one year, and so I was living in an exile hut, which is about 12 of us, and in that house we have graphic designer, we have a filmmaker, we have a chef, we have a yoga teacher, we have a kickboxer. So we have all of these talented people. So we said, what do we do? How can we be participating in this food anniversary? So this is where we came our first a new Burma exhibition. We had eight artists um, were displayed, uh, artists were involved. So we had a graphic designer, we had a contemporary artist. So, yeah, we had about eight artists involved in it, and we had a two day exhibition. Each day we were raised, um, I think, 50,000 baht, maybe more. Um, and on the left hand side is the, um, she was our first customer at our exhibition. She has been gone through three different crew in her life. And also we have on the right hand side, this is our tattoo artist slash trauma yoga healing teacher. Next one please. And then we take the second Anubha exhibition to Melbourne. It's my home. That's where I was migrated to in 2002. And I said, I want to take this show to my home because I grew up with Burmese diaspora community. We were never connected with artists or creative in Burmese diaspora. We might have our poets coming to have a speak, but never really seen Burmese art that is so brilliant. So we did a four days exhibition. Can we go to the next one? So this four days exhibition was actually, we were able to create it because the um, expats that used to live in Myanmar, who are living in Melbourne now, put their hands up saying, we want to help. Because of them, so we had an Australian curator coming to curate our show. We also had a, um, another a painter who is a, a Burmese refugee who is living in Melbourne now as an artist. So not only I'm taking the show to Melbourne, but it was we were able to have a solidarity movement with the artists in Australia. So with, in our Melbourne show, we were able to have about 12 artists. Uh, some of them are repeated from Bangkok, uh, and then we also, like you see, some of them are b-boy dancer. During the time, b-boy dancer was in the kitchen stage. He was teaching b-boy dancing to the refugees. And then we also had a contemporary dancer on the right hand side. She made a, a film clip talking about her friend who is in jail. So, yeah, can 
I think the Thai experience, we 
also had quite a few political refugees uh, outside of the country, but from, from, at least from what I know, it seems that the, the force, uh, the impact of, of, their, of their struggle uh, decreases substantially once they are out of the country. But in the case of, of Vietnam, it would appear that you know, the, the, the main voice that allows the world to hear about what's going on in Vietnam now is from the, from the people outside the country. So, uh, and they were, uh, I, I also heard recently we were talking about an educated uh, new generation of, of migrant refugees from Vietnam. Uh, there was a, a Burmese language bookstore established in Chiang Mai. Uh, this is, it, it just goes to show what a significant expat community uh, is there in Chiang Mai. Yeah. Not only bookstores, we have loads of restaurants. We also have, um, like, these are so many Burmese businesses in whether not only in Chiang Mai or Bangkok, even in Nisa. Like, you know, there's a lot of bars that are owned by Burmese people because there's that amount of Burmese people in Nisa. So that actually is another way how we boost economic, economically to Thai. And we need to look into that. Um, you know, and most of the university is um, Burmese students are the most one of the most uh, uh, number that is registered. So uh, this is something that different side of the artists that uh, activism uh, we need to look into that because there is I believe we are the number four or six in the economic chart in Thailand that.
that's more inclusive and in friendly society. And if I'm sorry, when the when the group happened, um, it is not about the women engagement. We can call it now, but we see news already press that you or you may or you may not notice that a woman aerobic uh, dance she is dancing.
like it is not to be the uh, soldier that they are helping people who fight for the democracy and also who fight for who fight for the military in the UK. So this is how they have been. Oh, yeah. 
that can make protagonists in the strong like, female role model of protesting, but like, it's supposed to be like the symbol of protest against uh, a military regime as well. And do you think that, uh, is that like why it was adopted by this protest movement? Because so many of the leaders in the activist movement are female, but as well it is protesting uh, a military regime. Thank you. Yes, it's a 
they also write those things in their hand. But one of my friends, he would like to write in his hand, but he has so many ideas to write. <laughs> like when he wrote a tic tac toe, he has a lot of things to say in his hand. That's why so, like, when he has to go out, he always has to wear long sleeve cap. Otherwise, the other people are arresting him. That's <laughs> I think this is also a generation gap thing because uh, I don't know people of my age, like the end of generation X, you know, are not big fans of the game. And in Thailand, this is actually the, the, the Scout movement. And the Scout movement symbol was founded by around the six. So from my point of view, this is a very loyal sign. But I mean this is this is a different generation, right? So the, the younger generation did rock, did my did this is a hundred games, so, so and, and, and I think this reflects very well that, that this new wave of movement is 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 a, definitely a different generation uh, than most other men up here.
at the end of the dissertation is basically that bystanders are not really bystanders <laughs> because people who, who are at home or who seem to be just you know, going about their business, selling things in shops or whatever, they aim. <laughs> they aim the protesters when, when the protesters run away. They, 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 they help them hide, they give them food, they give them money. So, so I, I think in this century, it's very difficult to to define who is a professor, who is a bystander, and you know, if it's part time, full time, it's like, you know, uh, everyone is in plain clothes, right? No one's wearing a uniform, so, so at the end of the day, the thing that one of the conclusions of that thesis is, is there really just a bystander? Because they, they all, at the end of the day, they all uh, contribute one way or another. So thanks for raising that. This is why I think this would be visible, but I just
Thank you very much.